Conditions for rectangles and rhombuses. This is 6.5a. We have 12 previous videos for Chapter 6 that are in the Geometry Playlist. When we're given a parallelogram with certain properties, we can use the theorems from this lesson to determine whether the parallelogram is a rectangle or is a rhombus. When we're given a quadrilateral, we can use conditions to classify the quadrilateral as a rectangle, rhombus, or square. So, to determine whether a parallelogram is a rectangle, we have two theorems here. These are the conditions for rectangles. And theorem 6.5.1 says, if one angle of a parallelogram is a right angle, just one, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. But be careful with this theorem. The quadrilateral must be a parallelogram, okay? We can write it in geometric notation as parallelogram with one right angle, therefore rectangle. The next theorem says, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, so this di diagonal is congruent to that diagonal, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. So AC is congruent to BD. We can write it in geometric note hand, notation as parallelogram with diagonals congruent, therefore rectangle. Okay? So remember, if a parallelogram has one right angle, like that, it's a rectangle. If it has congruent diagonals, it's a rectangle. And if a parallelogram has congruent consecutive sides, it's a rhombus. Or if it has perpendicular diagonals, it's a rhombus. And if a parallelogram is a rectangle and a rhombus, it's a square. A carpenter built a wood frame for the side of a shed so that XY, that's along the top, is congruent to WZ, that's along the bottom. And XW, that's right here on the left, is congruent to YZ, right here on the right. And using a tape measure, the carpenter found that XZ, a diagonal, was equal to WY, the other diagonal. So why must the frame be a, tri a rectangle? Well, both pairs of opposite sides of WXYZ are congruent. So WXYZ is a parallelogram. And since XZ, this diagonal, is equal to WY, the other diagonal, the diagonals of WXYZ are congruent. Therefore, the, th the frame is a rectangle by theorem 6.5.2 that the diagonals are congruent, so it's a rectangle, okay? To determine whether a parallelogram is a rhombus, here's conditions for rhombuses. Theorem 6.5.3 says, if one pair of consecutive sides, so like EF and EH, okay, are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. We would write in geometric Notation, parallelogram with one pair consecutive sides congruent, therefore rhombus. Okay? The next one says, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, we can see the diagonals here and the little right angle marks, so they're perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Geometric notation would be parallelogram with diagonals perpendicular, therefore rhombus. Our last theorem says, if one diagonal is a parallelogram of a parallelogram bisects a pair of opposite angles, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. So this one diagonal is bisecting the opposite angles. So it's a rhombus. And just like 6.5.1, this theorem over here, okay, see, the, quadril the quadrilateral needs to be a parallelogram this 6.5.5 is the same. The quadrilateral must be a parallelogram. We would write it in geometric notation as parallelogram with diagonals bisecting opposite angles, therefore rhombus. Now some math textbooks define a rectangle as a parallelogram with one right angle. Well that sounds like our first theorem, doesn't it? It's a parallelogram with one right angle and this definition is equivalent to a quadrilateral with four right angles because if one angle of a parallelogram is a right angle, well then the parallelogram is a rectangle. And if a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then it's a parallelogram. 
okay? We have a two column proof for theorem 6.5.5, this one with the one diagonal bisecting the opposite angles. It says, given that JKLM is a parallelogram and JL bisects angle KJM, this one, and angle KLM, this one, we need to prove that JKLM is a rhombus. So our first statement is going to be our given that JKLM is a parallelogram and that segment JL bisects angle KJM and angle KLM. Number two is going to be that angle one is congruent to angle two and angle three is congruent to angle four because that's the definition of an angle bisector. Number three is that segment JL is congruent to segment JL and if you've been watching all along you know what I'm going to say this side for this triangle is congruent to this side for this triangle. So that's the reflexive property of congruence. And triangle JKL, this one here, is congruent to JML, this one down here, because of angle side angle from steps two and three. We have an angle, a side, and an angle. So segment JK, this one here, is congruent to JM, this one here, because of their corresponding parts of congruent triangles, so they're congruent, CPCTC, which means JKLM is a rhombus because it's a parallelogram with a pair of consecutive sides congruent, therefore it's a rhombus, okay? Our next lesson is apply and identify special para parallelograms in the coordinate plane, that's 6.5b. Then we're going to talk about kites and isosceles trapezoids. So. If you are writing down these theorems, try to draw little pictures like this so that it helps you remember what the theorems are for and what they do. And if it were me, I would have a notebook with all these proofs in it that I'm doing in these videos because if it's not the exact proof that you're going to need for your homework or test, it will help you make that proof because you'll see the train of thought going on, okay? So I would have a little notebook section or a whole notebook of proofs, okay? Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye. It would really help me if you hit the like button. Thanks.